Well, this is Jody Smith, who is the president of the Harvard Historical Aviation Society and really the driving force behind <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> and this is Gary Hillman. He's the vice president and co-founder of the Harvard Historical Aviation Society and definitely my partner in crime. <laughs> well, I had a, a hangar that I had just built, uh, Avtech hangar. And um, I've been on the airport a long, long time and the base had closed a um, number of years before we'd even opened this new hangar. But over the years, I guess I was a little disappointed in the fact that uh, they changed the name on Minarski Park. That kind of bothered me because that was a, a very historical thing and it was a memorial thing. It was a, uh, an award given to a man that uh, this kind of property be put in, his name would be put on the property. But while I was in that hangar, um, I met Jody because she came in and worked at the cafe called Tepatinas. And uh, Jody came in and uh, was working in that cafe and I found out she worked over at the base and lived over at the base and asked her the question, you know, well, how do you feel about them taking that name off there? And uh, what was your response? Well, I was not happy <laughs> at all because this base was where, this was actually my first job when uh, I moved to Alberta. And um, this is where I met my husband. He worked in the, the Diefenbunker and um, we got posted to Calgary. And then I came back to run the pool civilian and went, what the heck happened to Minarski Park? Everything was gone. It seemed like that they just wanted to erase the military piece of this land. And so then when Gary, when I met Gary and he asked me about that, I was like, it's crazy. I cannot believe where did Springbrook come from? Um, because to me, it should have been, should have remained Minarski Park. And I come from the aviation side of being on the airport for a number of years in this airport uh, that was former base, but there was a bunch of us in aviation that knew the significance of that area being called Minarski Park. And there was a number of us in the aviation side here on the airport that said that was wrong. That, that, that should never have happened. So it was kind of festering or burning sort of in our minds that uh, this wasn't right. Yeah, and so we decided we're gonna do something about it. So we thought, let's we just did. have the name change back. And uh, we had to get the support of the community association. And so we went to a meeting and they were not in favor of changing the name back. The biggest reason, because they didn't want people to have to change their driver's license back. Um, but they would be in favor of us naming a park, Minarski Park. And so that's what we set out to do. And we had a donation of a very large slab of uh, stone that we could put his story on and a picture of him and, and his Lancaster. And so that um, people would understand the importance of this man and what he did and that this area was not always called Springbrook. And there was a reason for it to be called Minarski Park. So we met in the fall of 2003 and we had that park dedicated September 4th of 2004. And it was after that that we decided, hey, we should go see a real Lancaster. <laughs> and so uh, we decided to go to Nanton, which was the Lancaster Society Museum at that time and saw the Lancaster down there and they had an event going on and there was some people from the military museums in Calgary and they were doing a big uh, rebuild of their museum. And so I was approached and they said, we heard that you have some artifacts given to you after you dedicated the park. And I said, yeah, I did. People started just giving me historic stuff to do with the base. And they said, well, we're interested in having those so that people will come and read about the history of the Penhole base at our museum. Okay, um, I told Gary about it and on the way home we talked and we thought who in their right mind is going to come over to find history on the Penhole base and think I'm going to go to Calgary to find that. So Gary and I decided I think we should start our own museum and of course we know nothing 
about this, but we thought, let's talk to the county, right? Yeah, we thought maybe just a, a building that might be open and available, not being used on the current property. That would be really neat to have a, something like that right on the current property, because I couldn't think of anything on the airport that would be suitable. But uh, there was some free space open in places on, on the uh, base and, and some buildings that were empty. So we thought, well, let's just see how far we can go with this. And that's where we went up to the county. Yeah, and we met with two people from the county and pitched our idea and they loved it. Total support. So we went away and said, okay, I guess we got to start a group together. We can't do this on our own. So we brainstormed people that we thought would be a great fit for the board and we handpicked our first board and um, we were very lucky the people that came along and in um, March of the following year, in 2000, actually it was a couple of years we went through this, it was March 2007 that we became official society and let me tell you picking the name for society was one of the biggest nightmares. <laughs> Still not sure we got it right. I know. It's hard to incorporate without putting a name on. We didn't want to be the CFE Penhold uh, Museum because we're in Springbrook, but we're at the Red Deer Airport. So it, it was really hard to pick a name not associated with a uh, already named location. And we wanted to focus quite a bit on the Cold War era with the Harvard, and the Harvard seemed to be the airplane that most people uh, associated the base with still. And so that needed to be key in there. And we didn't want to be called a museum because people think museums aren't fun and they're stuffy and boring and just full of history. <laughs> and so although we are focused on history, we didn't want to have that type of image. And so that's what we, we settled on. And we well, had nothing. Oh, we had one sign. Yes, we at, did. At the entrance to Tamarack, uh, when they dedicated at Minarski Park, there was a sign put on one light post to do with the community calling Monarski Park and the other sign post had a sign to do with the Anderson of Craigmile School because the dedication was at the same time and so after the park it was Ray Elphick that gave me the Andrew Monarski sign mm -hmm. and said here I think you're you're going to need this and that was our very first artifact. So. Yeah and when stuff started to come to us it just seemed like what we were planning on doing was was meant to be because stuff started coming that we had no idea that was out there. And we started looking at, okay, uh, this base started in World War II and the airplane that was used at the time was an airspeed Oxford. And yet we were talking ourselves as the Harvard Society and we, the Harvard, we did have connection with the 370 here on the base. So we thought, how should we go about this? And maybe we could be looking at a bigger space and possibly even a hangar. And that's when we went off back to the county and said, there's a, some land that we would like to, to lease or something, arrange, make arrangements with the county. Hopefully they would donate it. And, um, you know, we went in with the idea that uh, uh, let's ask for the world and see what we get. And here was that. Uh, recreational land uh, right along Airport Drive on the north side of Airport Drive that turned in there was a track a running track and sports field there and we just wondered if you know how much would it take to, to have space to put a building up in there and we thought well by the time we put a parking lot and a building that looks something like a hangar we would likely need oh maybe we could ask for two acres so we went with a little bit of a a PowerPoint presentation uh, about the history and the significance of trying to pump this thing up as best we possibly could to uh, make it sound like it was really important uh, to get two acres from the county. And the county's response was, leave it with us and we'll talk about it and get back to you. Was it the next day? It wasn't long after. It know. wasn't long after and they come back to us and said, we want to talk to you. So we thought, well, that's a little encouraging. What were the conditions going to be? But all they really said to us was, we don't think you asked for enough land. You can have 10 acres. And, and I, I think, think we were in shock. We, we still are. <laughs> so, I mean, that just give us a whole range of new ideas of things that we could do there with outside displays, uh, interactive uh, 
training th or training or, or education things that we could do with youth. Uh, we could hold special events there. There was just so much more we could do. So just big appreciation to the county for that offer. Yeah, we've, we've always said that we this whole thing started, we blame Andrew Minarski. Yeah. <laughs> because without him and that name change, I don't, I don't know if we would have pushed to do something like this, but with his name being removed from this community, it became obvious that people don't have any understanding of what happened out here. The significance of the World War II training that happened with through the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan, and then you know the importance of Minarski, and I really believe that it was allowed to be changed just due to ignorance. People did not understand the significant importance of his name and what he did, and um, I, I hope that my hope is that one day um, we do take a greater interest in our history and celebrating um, it and honoring it, and that there is a drive and a hunger to hopefully uh, restore his name back to this area. That's my hope. We had uh, a great ceremony in when we did the presentation, and describe a little bit about who we had there and, and uh, what was the ceremony about, what all happened? Um, well, we had uh, Minarski's niece came from Winnipeg, and uh, she is, was the official spokesperson of the Minarski family for anything to do with Andrew Minarski at that time. I don't know if she still is. And so she flew out and then um, we had uh, the mayor and our MLA and our MP, you know, all the, the hoity toities. And uh, then we had a, a great unveiling. Community was all out. Uh, community Association did a barbecue. And then Minarski's uh, Squadron 419 is based at Cold Lake. And so um, they flew down and then brought some of the artifacts um, from him and that are attached to him. They do have uh, on hand the actual axe that Minarski used to uh, try and, and free Brophy. And so that came down too. And it was, uh, it was just a great, great day. Sometimes I look back and I can't even believe we did that, yeah, I mean, yeah. but um, I think we must have had a passion and I don't know, we were still working too, but we managed to still pull that off, just the two of us. Yeah. And um, yeah, now it's led to where we're at now with you know the most Oxfords in the country and trying to uh, rebuild an Oxford, two, two that were here at Penhall, yes. is that right? Yep. Yeah, and then also a tiger moth back to flying. We've expanded our scope to encourage, to look after really all the history of the Reggie Airport and as well um, into the history of the Bowdoin uh, base during the war. So things have grown and expanded. Um, we're still hopeful to build a facility one day. That's still the plan. But we wanted to make sure we had an airplane or two to put in it before, because no one wants to just come and look at a building that's empty. So that's where our focus has been right now and where our money goes to is trying to get these airplanes restored. And we, we teach along the way and, yep. and just have connected so much in the historic aviation community throughout the province um, and throughout Canada. We are actually quite connected for being so small, yep. but we're mighty. Yeah, we're strong. <laughs> <laughs> so now, well, <laughs> win the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> and donate it to us. I, I think that that um, by a yearly membership uh, to support what we're doing, um, it supports the society as well as the projects that we do. Uh, if you'd like to get involved, we, we always welcome everyone. You don't have to know airplanes to be involved. There's lots of other areas that we definitely could use people, especially with fundraising. And, um, you know, think of us at tax time. We are a registered charity, and so we can give uh, a tax receipt as well. So, I just connect people with us that maybe know about the history. The membership is, is really good and really keen in the, even just knowing what we're doing and what's coming up or um, new finds. Um, we, we try to put as much of that information in the newsletter as we can. And there's a bunch of different areas. It's not just about Oxfords and Harvards. Uh, since we've taken on the history of the 
Bowden Base, uh, which was an elementary flying training school, uh, we're restoring a Tiger Moth, and we had donated to us uh, a Tiger Moth that would be flyable, and we're going to make it flyable. That was the condition of the donation. So people that have maybe interest in that, or if you know somebody that's got some parts off of something, I mean, this was a training area, and there were some airplanes that crashed, and then there were some airplanes that were disposed of around here and sold off to farmers or whatever, and maybe there's pieces or whatever. So we're still interested in those kind of things. Uh, the bunker, uh, anybody that may be um, in the military had experience in the bunker, photographs, stories. You know, it, airplanes are great and all these uh, other things are all great, but it's really about the people. The people are the dedicated ones who saw the need for our freedom and uh, did their contribution into uh, helping. And so it could be the recreation side, the fun they had. It could be uh, some stories that, that uh, were significant about this area. Uh, we're also taking on uh, the history of the airport after it became civilian. So things like the flying clubs, the air shows, um, anybody that maybe has some information on some of those things posters from the air show or programs, um, anything like that. I mean, there were some fun and interesting things happened during air shows. I was involved with all of them since uh, 1984 when the first one was started up here as a, on the civilian side. So uh, we'd be interested in all that. We have uh, two link trainers, which was the, the simulator of sorts back in the day. And we have two of those and they're just in storage right now. So we can always use some help with uh, anybody taking an interest in that part.